Hello, and welcome to worship with Highline United Methodist Church this week, the third Sunday of Lent. Today, our focus is on the social community. Let us begin with a prayer. Let us reach out our hands to each other as we join in prayer. The grace of God be with the oppressed, the poor, the marginalized, and the groaning creation. We open our arms for it is right and good to extend our arms to one another. Amen. no querían a Jesús porque Jesús les decía que no hicieran mal a nadie que amaran a todos por igual. Jesús hablaba con sus amigos, que también eran sus discípulos. Algunos eran pescadores. Cuando los pescadores regresaban a la orilla, 
orilla arrastraban la red fuera del agua y veían su pesca. Ellos se quedaban con los pescados buenos y tiraban los pescados malos. Una vez Jesús les dijo, la red de los pesca pescadores es como el reino de Dios. Todos querían ser parte de su reino, pero los ángeles de vendrán y separa separarán a la gente considerada de la gente malvada. La gente considerada vivirá conmigo en el cielo por siempre. Querido Dios, ayúdanos a obedecerte y ser considerados. Gracias por tu amor y por tu Hijo Jesús. Adiós, amiguitos. Hi, little friends. Today we are going to learn about why it is important to obey God's will. Jesus teaches to people about God's love. Some people do not like Jesus because he told them to he told them do good, love your neighbor. Jesus told his friends a story about fishermen. They were his disciples too, and some of them were fishermen. When the fishermen returned to, to shore, they dragged their net out of the water and looked through their their catch said Jesus they kept all the good fish and tossed out all the bad fish Jesus said the fisherman's net is like God's kingdom everybody everyone wants to be part of his kingdom but the angels will come and separate the godly people from the ungodly people people the godly people will live in heaven with me forever dear god help us to obey you and to be considerate with others Thank you for your love and your son, Jesus. Bye, friends! Good morning, church. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Come, divine interpreter. Bring me eyes, thy book to read, ears, thy mystic words to hear, words which did from thee proceed, words that endless bliss impart, kept in obedient heart. All who read or hear are blessed, if thy plain commands we do. Of thy kingdom here possessed, thee we shall in glory view. When thou comest on earth to abide, reign triumphant at thy side. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from Mark chapter 8 verses 31 through 38. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, 
get behind me, Satan, for you are setting my mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. <clears throat> May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. If any want to be my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me, says Jesus. Deny yourself. What are we to deny of ourselves? Take up your cross. What does that mean? We have traditionally thought of this passage as meaning to sacrifice ourselves as Jesus did. What are we sacrificing and for what then? Many Christians say Jesus died for our sins so we wouldn't have to die. If that is true, then what are we picking up a cross for? As my father became my mother's caregiver, he would say, this is my cross to bear. It made me think about what marriage vows mean and whether or not we are sacrificing ourselves for the sake of the other in that choice to be yoked to one another for the duration of our lives. Do we think of marriage as a sacrifice? We certainly have to learn to give up pieces of ourselves or deny ourselves as Jesus says, if we were, are to stay married. Our current independent culture does not value giving up of self on a regular or permanent basis. We talk about soldiers making the ultimate sacrifice, willing to die for our country. But what do we give up of ourselves for them? Are we willing to pay more taxes to ensure they have adequate health care and housing when they return only half dead, no longer independent and able to work a 40-hour week because of a brain injury or mental illness? Peter was ready to fight. He rebuked Jesus for saying the Son of Man would be killed. To that, Jesus responded with, Get behind me, Satan. Peter is tempting Jesus with a physical revolution fighting with human strength to get what one wants. Instead, Jesus says his followers will deny themselves, pick up a cross, and follow him. What happens then between Mark chapter 8, today's scripture, and chapter 14, when the events of Jesus' arrest and crucifixion begin? Jesus continues his journey towards Jerusalem, healing people, and reminding his disciples that they are to serve rather than to be served. Those with means he tells to give away what they have. He rebukes those who desire honor, but do not honor and respect the poor. Jesus' final moment with the disciples before his death is a meal, the Last Supper. As he gives them bread and says, This is my body, what does it mean for his disciples? I believe our current times put an overemphasis on communion being for the forgiveness of sins. In Mark's gospel, Jesus does not say the cup is poured out for the forgiveness of sins. He just says it's poured out for many. It is only Matthew's gospel that mentions it is for the forgiveness of sin. What does it mean for us to take communion then? What does it mean to share in eating bread and wine? 
Why does Jesus call the bread his body and the wine his blood? I would like to challenge us to consider that Jesus wants us to give of ourselves. When he calls bread his body and gives it to others to eat, he is saying he gives us all of himself. It is this act of selflessness that he is giving to us. I believe today's scripture is also asking us to do the same. To deny oneself is an act of selflessness. Acting for the benefit of others in the way that Jesus does may very well lead to being crucified. Selflessness, selfless giving and treating everyone as a child of God can be very threatening to people in places of power. As we continue to work through the United Methodist Social Principles, today we consider the social community. In this section, all people of all backgrounds, ages, genders, sexualities, levels of wealth, or education, and status, all considered equal to God. And any any and all divisions that humans create to segregate one another and value one person over another are called out to be changed. In our social principles, it is considered each person's work as well as the work of the body of the church to actively dismantle any form of oppression in our society. We are to take up the plight of Black Lives Matter, of immigrants, of those without homes, of veterans' care, and much, much more. We are to sit and dine with one another, sharing our bread, which is a metaphor for any resource we have, whether that is actual food or money or our physical abilities. Some of us find it easier to give of ourselves than to receive from others or even to ask for help from others. I was just able to debrief the severe weather shelter with our overnight staff crew. These five people were truly amazing. Yes, they were paid to be there, but they gave of themselves above and beyond what a typical job would ask. They worked incredibly long hours, dealt with situations some people would never be exposed to, and kept coming back. Afterwards, they were truly thankful for the opportunity to serve in this capacity and were willing to be involved in the future. While there was always the risk of the COVID virus being spread through the shelter, we took every precaution we could in minimizing that risk. We had several volunteers who would be considered in the high risk category, yet every time they saw the call for help whether with cleaning or with serving meals, they showed up. While I'm very happy that no one has reported getting sick, and it will be three weeks since we closed on this coming Monday, there was always that risk. There was a certain amount of selflessness that went into people showing up. But all of us were faced with what to do once the shelter started to fill up. No one wanted to turn someone back out into the snow and freezing temperatures. We all accepted the risks that were presented to us, and we did what we would if we we did what we would have wanted if we were the ones freezing and needing a place to warm up and stay dry. Many folks put up with cranky people those nights because they knew it was caused by mental illness and was not personal. As a team, the staff looked out for each other and made sure anyone needing a break got it. Everyone spoke up about their need for sleep when they hit the wall of needing it. To me, this was a wonderful example of being the body of Christ, the bread shared with others. Life poured out for many of denying oneself and taking up their cross. May we all find a way to selflessly 
be the body of Christ for another. Let it be so. Amen. Join me in a litany of our social creed. God, in the spirit revealed in Jesus Christ, calls us by grace to be, to be renewed, renewed in, in the image, image of, of our, our creator, creator, that, that we, we may, may be one in divine, divine love, love for the, the world. world. Today is the day God cares for the integrity of creation, wills the healing and wholeness of all life, weeps at the plunder of earth's goodness, and so, and so shall, shall we. we. Today is the day God embraces all hues of humanity, delights in diversity and difference, favors solidarity, transforming strangers into friends, and, and so, so shall, shall we. we. Today is the day God cries with the masses of starving people, despises growing disparity between rich and poor, demands justice for workers in the marketplace. And, and so, so shall, shall we. we. Today is the day 
God deplores violence in our homes and streets, rebukes the world's warring madness, humbles the powerful, and lifts up the lowly. And And so so shall we. we. Today is the day God calls for nations and peoples to live in peace, celebrates where justice and mercy embrace, exults when the wolf grazes with the lamb. And And so so shall shall we. we. Today Today is the day God God brings brings good news to the poor, proclaims release to the captives, gives sight to the blind, and sets the oppressed free. And so so shall we. we. Amen. Please join me in our confession. We confess confess our our sin, individual individual and and collective, by silence silence or or action. action. Through the violation of human dignity based on race, class, age, sex, nation, or faith. Through the exploitation of people because of greed and indifference. Through the misuse of power in personal, communal, nation, and international life. Through the search for security by those military and economic forces that threaten human existence, through the abuse of technology which endangers the earth and all life upon it. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We commit ourselves individually and as a community to the way of Christ, to take up the cross to see abundant life for all humanity, to struggle for peace with justice and freedom, to risk ourselves in faith, hope, and love, praying that God's kingdom may come. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Most holy and gracious God, we give thanks for this day and for this opportunity to reflect on communion, on what it means to be part of the body of Christ, and to be part of the bread that is broken open and given to others, for life poured out for the benefit of others. Help each of us, and for us as a church, and a community to reflect on what it is that we hold so dearly and are so afraid of giving away. Help us to understand what self-denial means. Help us to take stock of where our wants and our desires get in the way of our ability to give. Help us to trust that when we give of ourselves, we receive as much back in many different ways. Walk with us, O God. Help us pick up the cross or to be the bread that is passed from person to person with baskets full of leftovers. We lift up to you this world that we live in for all of creation that struggles for the people who live in places that are torn by conflict and violence and war. For those that are still trying to recover from storms and floods, fires. For those who struggle to have enough to eat to have a place of decent shelter for all of our children and youth who are struggling 
being away from school and friends, for all who suffer during this time of isolation that has gone on for a year, we lift them up to you, O oh God. Be with each of us in our struggles and in our joys. All this we ask in the name of the Christ. Amen. As we prepare ourselves to take communion, I invite you to have a piece of bread and a cup of juice and follow along with me in this liturgy um, as we consecrate the elements. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You brought all things into being and called them good. From the dust of the earth, you formed us into your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. When rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, you bore up the ark on the waters, saved Noah and his family, and made covenant with every living creature on earth. When you led your people to Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, you gave us your commandments and made us your covenant people. When your people forsook your covenant, your prophet Elijah fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and on your holy mountain he heard your still, small voice. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, when you gave him to us from our when you gave him to save us from our sin, your spirit led him into the wilderness where he fasted 40 days and 40 nights to prepare for his ministry. When he suffered and died on a cross for our sin, you raised him to life, presented him alive to the apostles during 40 days and exalted him at your right hand. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Now, when we, your people, prepare for the yearly feast of Easter, you lead us to repentance for sin and the cleansing of our hearts, that during these 40 days of Lent, we may be gifted and graced to reaffirm the covenant you made with us through Christ. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when, was, when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. 
Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now we are bold to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to take your bread to break it open, signifying the one loaf broken open to be shared with many. And take your cup and raise it, the one cup that we all partake of. If you have others with you taking communion, I invite you to serve one another by taking bread and offering it the body of Christ given for you. The cup of salvation given for you. In the United Methodist Church, it, once the bread and the cup are consecrated, we don't, we don't um, waste them. So I encourage you to eat all of the bread and drink all of the juice, or if you're not able to do that, to return it to the earth, give it back to creation. You can spread the bread for the birds and squirrels to eat, um, and just pour the juice into the ground so it returns to the earth. Now let us pray. Eternal God, we give thanks for this holy mystery in which you give, have given yourself to us through your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray that having been fed by this body, nourished by you, we go forth from this table to be that bread that nourishes others and cares for others. Amen. Hear 
considered this blessing as we prepare to leave this time of worship. As you cross the boundaries that fight against people humbly serving each other, you will face conflict. You will be tempted to focus on protecting yourself. But putting on heavy armor forces you to stand still. Instead, set your feet on the goal of peace. Then you will be walking by the Spirit. As you walk in peace, then comes kindness and goodness on the journey. Small but powerful acts of resistance in a world that nurtures conflict. May the hard work of forbearance and gentleness be made possible by the exercise of self-control. Choosing to continue in peace, may genuine joy make you glad. And in all these things, may the love of God so fill your soul that you experience the profound power of grace and peace. Amen. Go in peace.